What if I told you that a breakthrough in Canadian wilderness could shift the future of energy, not just for Canada, but for the entire world? And Canada is about to cash in big time. On this channel, we've discussed geopolitics from many different perspectives, and a thread we return to often is the resources that Canada has, how vast they are, and perhaps underutilized. Well, that story is about to get more exciting. In the vast, rugged expanse of northern Quebec, beneath forests and rivers untouched by industry, a new chapter is being rewritten, and it's not oil, and it's not gold, not the kind of story most Canadians are used to hearing about their own land. Instead, it is about lithium, a mineral that until recently, most people only thought about when their phone battery started to die, or maybe in a chemistry class. But make no mistake, the story unfolding here is about power technology, the next century of global competition, and at its very heart, an artificial intelligence quietly mapping the Earth from space. Today we'll break down what was found, how it was found, and why it's about more than rocks and robots. I'm Elle, I have a PhD in computer science, and I work in finance where spotting geopolitical patterns is kind of part of the job. This is a story about Canadian leverage in the world to come. Happy New Year, my friends. This one is going to be amazing. Let's start with the core of the news. Earlier this year, in the remote James Bay region of Quebec, an Australian company named Fleet Space Technologies made an announcement. It sent ripples through mining, tech, and geopolitical circles alike. Using a cutting-edge system that combines satellites in orbit and sensors on the ground, they mapped out what could be one of North America's largest hard rock lithium deposits. This site, this Cisco Lithium project, sits on a patch of land already known for its mineral wealth, but the scale of what's now been identified is something else entirely. According to Fleet Space's analysis, the deposit could contain as much as 329 million metric tons of lithium-bearing ore, enough to supply millions of electric vehicles, potentially tip the scales in North America's favor in the global battery race. But what really sets this discovery apart isn't just its size, though that's staggering enough, of course, it's how quickly and efficiently it was identified, thanks to the marriage of artificial intelligence and space technology. In a world where every major economy is scrambling for access to critical minerals, this is not just a good news story for mining investors, it's a strategic windfall for Canada. The world is getting louder, my friends. Algorithms fight for your attention. Politicians sell you easy answers. The media rewards outreach over truth. My book, Awake, teaches you how to think clearly through all of it. It's now available both as an ebook and an audiobook. Before you buy, read the first chapter completely free. Links are below. If it resonates, the full book is there with a 10% subscriber discount. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So, how did this happen? Traditionally, finding minerals meant sending teams into the field, drilling countless test holes, poring over rocks and soil samples, waiting months or even years for results. It was laborious, expensive, disruptive to the land. Sometimes it worked, often it just didn't. But the Cisco project used a radically different approach. Fleet Space Technologies deployed its Exosphere platform, a constellation of small satellites circling the Earth in low orbit, on the ground, their team scattered dozens of palm-sized seismic sensors, called geodes, across the wilderness. These little devices quietly listened to the faint, ambient vibrations of the Earth itself. Back at the mission control, AI models took over. Now the data is there, right? The satellites collected a torrent of data from above, images, magnetic readings, gravity measurements, while the ground sensors picked up seismic whispers from below. It's a full picture. Machine learning algorithms stitched together this data, teasing out patterns and clues that would have been impossible to spot by human eye alone. Within 48 hours, the AI had mapped out an underground landscape, rock formations, mineral pockets, likely drilling targets, saving months or even years of trial and error. Now, it's no exaggeration to say that this is the future of mineral exploration. It's faster, more accurate, and critically, less intrusive to fragile ecosystems. And yes, for all the AI haters out there, for everyone worried about robots taking jobs or unleashing chaos, this is just an example of artificial intelligence unlocking genuine good. Without these algorithms, the deposit might have remained hidden for another decade. And instead, the world's transition to clean energy just got a serious shot in the arm. Now, let's just zoom out for a moment. Why all this excitement about lithium? For years, lithium has been quietly powering our lives. Every phone, laptop, power tool, and most critically, electric car relies on lithium-ion batteries. 
As countries from the US to China to Germany race to decarbonize their economies and electrify their cars, buses and power grids, demand for lithium has soared in recent years. The International Energy Agency projects that by 2040, global demand for lithium could increase by as much as 40 times what we use today. Other forecasts suggest lithium demand will grow from 1.3 million metric tons this year to between 3.6 and 5.2 million metric tons by 2040. That's a huge increase. Right now, most lithium comes from far away, Australia, Chile, and especially China, which not only mines lithium, but processes and controls much of the world's supply chain for batteries. That creates a strategic vulnerability for everyone except for China, especially for North America, as tensions rise and governments look for reliable ethical sources close to home, every new lithium discovery in a stable, friendly country suddenly matters a huge deal. This is where Canada's moment arrives. The lithium beneath Quebec's forest isn't just about future profits or resource extraction, it's essentially about energy independence, security, a seat at the table as the world redefines what makes a country actually powerful. And let's just be clear, not all countries are equal when it comes to critical minerals. It's not just about who has the rocks, but who can get them out of the ground, process them, turn them into finished products in a way that's clean, efficient, and geopolitically secure. Canada, thanks to this discovery and a host of other advantages, is, in my opinion, uniquely positioned here. First, there's geography. The James Bay region is remote but accessible. Sitting on the edge of a province with abundant clean energy, Quebec's legendary hydroelectric dams are there. This matters a massive deal. In a world increasingly focused on climate, being able to mine and process lithium using renewable power is a massive game changer. Quebec's electricity supply is over 90% hydroelectric, meaning refining lithium in the province results in significantly lower carbon emissions than refining in regions dependent on coal. Second, there's politics. Canada tends to be stable, democratic, seen as a trusted partner by both the United States and Europe. At a time when the world is fragmenting into rival economic blocks, this trust is worth its weight in gold or perhaps lithium. But the real opportunity goes deeper than simply digging up minerals and shipping them off. In recent years, Canada has begun building out the rest of the battery value chain. Refining, cell manufacturing, recycling, automakers like General Motors and Ford are investing in new EV plants in Ontario and Quebec, eager to source components locally and qualify for lucrative North American incentives. Battery giants are scouting for cities to build gigafactories that could turn Canadian lithium into the next generation of energy storage. In the big picture in all of this, if this new find pans out, Canada could go from being a supplier of raw materials to a builder of finished high-value technology. More jobs, more control, a booming economy, more leverage. That's a future worth aiming for, in my opinion. By the way, if you're enjoying this breakdown and want to support the channel, please do consider subscribing for more deep dives like this. And a special thank you to our channel members. Your support helps keep these videos coming. If you'd like to join the House of L community, just hit the join button on the main channel page. Anyway, let's get back to the story. Of course, this is not just about Canada. The whole world is watching and the ripple effects could be enormous, especially when a certain president gets a whiff of this. For decades, energy politics has revolved around oil. Who has it? Who sells it? Who can be caught off in a crisis? And now the shift to batteries is changing that equation a little bit. Countries are racing to lock down access to the minerals that power electric vehicles and renewable energy. China has spent years investing in mines from South America to Africa, building processing plants, locking up long-term contracts. The United States, wary of this dominance, has made friendshoring or reshoring critical mineral supply chains as a top policy goal. A giant new lithium source in Canada changes the strategic map. It gives North America a homegrown option, one that is cleaner, more secure, less vulnerable to foreign shocks. It also allows Canada, often seen as a quiet middle power, to punch above its weight in global negotiations. Just think about it, the batteries that will power the world's vehicles, homes and industries could soon bear a Made in Canada stamp, cute little tag. That's not just a commercial opportunity, we're talking geopolitical influence, a bargaining chip in trade talks, a magnet for investment from the biggest technology and automotive companies on earth. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, it's important to acknowledge the hurdles ahead, right? Discovering a vast deposit is only the first step. Turning it into a resource that powers real change is much harder. 
First, there's the issue of confirmation. The numbers released by Fleet Space are based on advanced models, yes, but they still need to be validated with real-world drilling and geological surveys as well. Canadian mining standards are among the strictest anywhere on this earth. Until the reserves are proven, everything remains potential rather than certainty. Then there are social and environmental realities. The Cisco project lies within the traditional territory of the Cree nation. Indigenous consultation is not just a legal formality in Canada, it is a moral and practical necessity. The project lies within the traditional territory of Cree nation, and under provincial Provincial law, exploration of eventual development must follow strict environmental assessment protocols and include consultation with indigenous communities. History is full of examples where resource projects failed or faced years of delay because indigenous rights and environmental stewardship were ignored. We're not to repeat those kinds of mistakes again. So to succeed, this project will need to involve local communities as true partners, not afterthoughts. There's also the challenge of building processing capacity and infrastructure. Mining the lithium is one thing, but refining it, turning it into battery cells, connecting those products to global markets is another thing. Canada's mining sector has been criticized in the past for being slow and bureaucratic, losing out to faster moving competitors abroad. This is actually a chance to do things differently, to move quickly, but also wisely, building a model of clean, responsible resource development that could actually become a global standard. So where does all of this leave us? I think Canada stands at a crossroads. With this discovery and others likely to follow as AI-powered exploration accelerates, the country has a once-in-a-generation chance to shape its destiny in the new energy era. Will Canada settle for business as usual, digging and shipping raw materials overseas, leaving most of the value and jobs for others? Or will it seize this moment, carpe diem style, to build a full world-leading battery ecosystem at home? Can it respect and partner with indigenous nations built on its green energy legacy, leverage its political stability into long-term prosperity and global leadership? Only time will tell, but one thing is clear, thanks to the unlikely partnerships of satellites, AI, and Canadian Earth, the world is watching. And the next moves will matter, not just for investors or policymakers, but for all of us, for anyone who wants a future powered by clean, secure, and sustainable energy. As we wrap up, let's not forget what this really represents. Canada's lithium find is about more than a headline, more than a mining boom. It's about whether we as a society can adapt to new tools, new challenges, new responsibilities. Artificial intelligence, when used well, can help us solve our hardest problems. Clean energy, when pursued thoughtfully, can offer prosperity without sacrifice. But it's up to all of us to demand that these breakthroughs are used wisely, inclusively, for the common good. So what do you think? Is Canada ready to take on this role, this challenge? Should the priority be speed, sustainability, or something else entirely? And what are your hopes or your worries about a world where AI isn't just writing code or chatbots, but actually discovering the resources that will power our lives? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoy this deep dive, hit like and subscribe and stay tuned because this story is just beginning and the next move could change everything. If you enjoy this video, check out the one linked here on the rise of the BRICS currencies where we discuss a way for Canada to advance even further. Who knows, perhaps the stars are aligning differently this time.